Welcome on back to Skipper's Day. I am going to run you through my favorite fantasy baseball draft strategy. We're on the road to 30,000 subscribers, so don't forget to subscribe. Join the Discord. Let's get into the strategy. The first strategy for me when I go into my drafts is I'm going to be drafting hitters early. We look at the latest mock draft that I'm going to do. There's maybe two pitchers going off the boards in the first two rounds. For me, I don't ever think I'm going to be the first guy to take a pitcher. I think you can get so much value in the middle rounds with those pitchers as well that I need a guy that's going to contribute to five different categories. They're going to be able to hit for decent average, drive people in, score runs, steal bases. And I think you can do that with the elite guys at the top of your drafts. And if I don't walk away with someone who can do something in all five categories, I'm going to be pretty disappointed if I'm not drafting those hitters early. You look at some of the final home run rankings as well, you can get some value as guys like Kyle Schwarber in the fifth. But again, you have Aaron Judge who's going first overall in some of these drafts able to hit 60 plus you have vlad going there pete alonzo moves up paul goldschmidt moves up to the second round of drafts this year i think people are going to have an emphasis on those types of players and i think if you can if you're missing out you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble and i do not like doing that so if, for me it's usually first two maybe even three rounds i'm taking hitters it depends on kind of what the run is like and where i am in the draft if i need to take the pitcher in the third round but if i really think about it in the first six rounds i'm going to go either four hitters two pitchers or three and three i'm not get, usually going to go heavy pitching because of, i think there's the values and i'll do the work for you to find those values in the middle rounds with the pitchers but i think there's guys that can do it so we go to pitching in the middle rounds there's a lot of guys that contribute look last year there was guys who kind of went right next to each other and joe musgrove and max freed and then you had shane mcclanahan as well there's guys like that as well this season dylan cease again is going in middle rounds for someone who has the strikeout upside era stuff wins like there's people that can do it all over that I'm not going to take a chance on drafting Garrett Cole every year at his highest potential value besides guys that I can take in the middle rounds at minimal potential value that I can see move up next season into the second or third rounds as well. And I think there's a lot of guys like that. Like you have people like Kevin Gosman going late again. Um, Christian Javier is going that way. So I think there's some players that you can do that with. So pitching in the middle rounds for me is very important, finding those guys who can contribute at a top tier level. Something I like to do and I will always do is taking those guys in the middle rounds. This video is brought to you by Peace Collective. If you're looking to rep your team this season, Peace Collective is the perfect place to start if you're looking for merch. You can get 10% off promo code OWNERSBOX10 at Peace Collective when you check out. I think a very simple one to do is take high upside guys late. There is a very simple thing to look at last season and a certain player and that guy's name was spencer strider jeremy who used to help co-host skippers it was like okay there's this guy throwing 100 miles an hour for the braves right now he might not make the rotation exactly but we took him in the last round of a best ball draft because the upside is there best ball is different than regular leagues i actually might be a worse option taking a guy like Spencer Strider not knowing how much he would play but in your regular drafts you need to know that you're not going to have those guys on your teams the full season that you're taking at the end of the end of the rounds like your last two round picks I would love to see high upside guys who might work their way into the lineup opening day opening week instead of guys like okay he has been able to do stuff his role isn't huge but you know he's pretty safe i think going safe late is maybe one of the dumber things you can do because you can find guys on the wire all the time i'll help you find guys on the wire with the must add videos every week but high upside guys late i think is just an awesome way to go about your drafts have some fun and you never know what you're gonna get you could have a spencer strider type for sure again um, Cedric Mullins, I took him in the do not draft video this time, but you picked him up off the wire in 2021, first week, and he went 30 for 30-30. So there's guys like that you can find high upside late, I think is one of the more fun strategies, and it's just something you need to do. And the last strategy I have is looking at proven guys coming off a bad year. One of the big things you can say about this was J.D. Martinez, someone coming off the COVID year, Coming back 2021 had an awesome season. You need to look, I think, some proven people. And I think a very good um, case for this this season is going to be Cattell Marte, someone who I was taking in the fifth round last year because I loved everything he did and the profile was there. Struggled this season. Home runs went down. Productivity went down everywhere with Cattell Marte. I'm going to take him when he's going in the – I didn't even see him in the 15 rounds I did of a mock draft the other day. So looking at proven guys who – maybe injury role decreased a little bit, but seeing them early on, taking a chance on those guys again, 
the two people who have kind of gone poorly for this are the Cody Bellingers, Christian Yelich, but Christian Yelich was a top 100 player again last year, and Cody Bellinger really struggled. So I think looking at proven players who underachieved or struggled with some injuries last season, taking a chance on them before the last couple rounds of your draft. So after the middle rounds, you're in the 13 to 17 range, looking at proven guys who have underachieved or been hurt is a good strategy for you. Well, that is my strategy when I'm going into my fantasy baseball dress. Let me know what you think, how you guys draft as well. Thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, Road to 30K, join the Discord, and I'll see you guys next time.